Uh, we've been told all of our lives. All we got to do is ask God for forgiveness, and you've got it. But there comes a certain point in our life that you can cross a line with God, and He's not going to hear you. He's not going to. He's not even going to know who you are. Once you cross that line. And that's what I want to try to prepare us for. To where we never cross. We all know. Uh, Y'all heard me preach this many times. Spiritually speaking, there's a. God's got this grand clock. Okay, we're going to call it a clock. Because our feeble minds can't conceive how he keeps track. Okay, but let's just call it God's clock. And everything that is, that is mentioned in the Bible has taken place. There's only one thing yet to happen on God's clock, and that's the rapture. I think Jesus is steadily looking at God, just waiting on an knock to say, go get them, boy. Bring them home. I think he's just waiting. He's, just, he's looking. God, come on. James 4 and 14 reads, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 reads, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, I think that is today, people, these are the latter times, these are the last days. Some shall depart from the faith, and we have all seen that. There is a great falling away right now. There are people departing the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I want y'all to just think about it. Having your conscience seared with a hot iron. How many of us have been burnt? Okay, you know how when you get burnt, it kind of gets that, that hard, slick surface on it, you know? Our conscience is like that. God's conviction does not eat at us like it used to. You know, we have gotten so used to God's conviction that we just... We need you to shrug it off, you know? I mean, instead of fixing it, I just ignore it. Mm. You know, our conscience has become seared from sin. Our conscience is seared. And God's conviction can't get into us like it used to at one time. That's, I think, I sincerely think that's why we have such trouble sometimes. God has to smack us around a little bit to get our attention. Hey, dummy. Hey, dummy. <laughs> Seriously. Because yeah. we won't listen. We're hard-headed. We have become so seared in our conscience. There are people dying everywhere, every day, every minute around the world of all ages. You don't have to be a certain age. Tragedy could strike you. And how do you know? You're sitting in church and you're and you're turning God down. You're turning God around. You don't want to hear it. You're sitting there. You'd rather sit there and hold on to the pew and just, you know, like uh, like it's a pain or something. Oh, it'll go away in a minute when that stupid preacher will shut up. You know, God will quit bothering me. How do you know you'll have another opportunity? How do you know you'll sit under another sermon? 
And I know this might not, I mean, you know, as far as I know, everybody in here is saved. But this sermon might be for somebody on, on uh, in video land. I don't know. But, I know I said video land. I don't know. On camera. Whatever you want to say. But how do you know? We don't know if we'll have another opportunity. We don't know if the rapture can take place right now. And I wish it would. But we don't know if we're going to make it home tonight. You might not have that opportunity. And you know, you might have another opportunity. You might get to go to church next Sunday. But what if the conditions are different? Either your heart's different or God just don't come to you. What's going to happen? Yeah. It's too late to cry. God don't have to knock for one time. Yeah. It's too late to cry. After the Spirit ceases to strive with you. I said this morning, you know, people see you. You have to live a witness in front of a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to hear it anymore. You have to live it. And if they see the way you live, well, some people are Christian. You know, that's sad. That makes our job that much harder. But actually, it makes us that much closer to the line. Right? That keeps us that much closer to God's expectation line. You know, it's one thing to say, I don't want God to use me. It's totally another to know that God can't use you. That's when it's sad. That's when it's too late to cry. When God can't use you. And you know, I've said this before. I don't think, uh, I know, God is not going to call somebody to do something that he don't think they can do it. God did not call me to preach for me to say, oh, God, I can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm the dumb old country boy. I don't know nothing. God's not going to call me to do something if he didn't think I could do it. But I don't do it. He does it through me. Amen. That's what God does. Okay, Katie's my baby girl. And she got me racked. Guilty. She can have her way with me. Okay? Daddy, you know, she, I might mean, give you a big old uh, puppy dog guys. Hey, can't help it. Go ask your mama. You know, I can't deal with Go ask your mama. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it says here in verse 17. They sought it carefully with tears. Tears didn't help. God's not going to feel bad and say, well, come on. You know, being as that you cried, come on, it'll be all right. Tears ain't going to help it. No matter how much you squall and bawl and snot and snort around, it ain't going to help it. God say, sorry. You did it. You did it. I didn't do it. Being a servant of God, we need to do as God bids us to do. If He touches your heart to testify, you need to testify. If He touches your heart to sing, you need to sing. If He touches your heart to do something, you better do it. Because there's consequences if you don't. If you keep refusing God, you'll eventually cross that line. What's God going to do when you become ineffective? Listen to this. Listen. Matthew 25, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whew. Oh, that's harsh. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into everlasting fire. That verse tells me there will be weeping. 